Hey everyone, in this video we're diving deep into expedition farming, specifically what it takes to farm Olrof profitably. I've tracked over 2000 logbooks and today we're breaking it down into three key areas. First, we'll look at the summary statistics, spawn rates, drop percentages and profits. These give us a baseline understanding of what to expect when running logbooks. Next, we'll tackle the RNG realities my own worst dry streaks and Monte Carlo simulations that model millions of runs. This will show you just how unpredictable farming can be and how to prepare for the worst case scenarios. Finally, we'll use these simulations to answer the big questions. How many logbooks do you need to break even and how many do you need to hit your profit goals? Whether you're aiming for 100, 200 or 500 divines, I'll give you the numbers you need to plan with confidence. So, if you're ready to dive into the data and take your expedition farming to the next level, let's get started. Now, let's dive into the summary statistics from over 2,000 logbooks I've run. We'll break down the spawn rates, drop percentages and profits for item level 79 and item level 80 logbooks, and see how they compare. We're specifically targeting two unique items. Olroth's Resolve, which currently sells for around 30 divines, and Heroic Tragedy, which sells for around 36 divines. First, let's look at item level 79 logbooks. Out of 708 runs, Olroth spawned in 127 logbooks, which is a 17.94% spawn rate. When Olroth did spawn, he dropped Resolve in 3.94% of spawns, and Heroic Tragedy in 7.87% of spawns. In terms of raw drops, that's 5 resolves and 10 heroic tragedies across all 708 logbooks. Now, let's talk about profits. After accounting for the cost of logbooks and the value of drops, the raw revenue from drops was 510 divines. After subtracting the cost of logbooks, the net profit was negative 21 divines, averaging a 0.03 divine loss per logbook. So item level 79 logbooks were slightly unprofitable in this sample. Next, let's look at item level 80 logbooks. Out of 1,295 runs, Olrof spawned in 266 logbooks, which is a 20.54% spawn rate. When Olrof did spawn, he dropped Resolve in 5.26% of spawns, and Heroic Tragedy in 9.77% of spawns. In terms of raw drops, that's 14 Resolves and 26 Heroic Tragedies across all 1,295 logbooks. Now, let's break down the profits. The raw revenue from drops was 1,356 divines. After subtracting the cost of logbooks, the net profit was 384.75 divines, averaging a 0.3 divine profit per logbook. So item level 80 logbooks were profitable in the sample, but as we'll see later, there's a lot of variability due to RNG. Now, let's look at the combined data for both item level 79 and 80 logbooks. Across 2002 runs, Olroth spawned in 393 logbooks, which is a 19.63% spawn rate. When Olroth did spawn, he dropped Resolve in 4.83% of spawns and Tarot Tragedy in 9.16% of spawns. In terms of raw drops, that's 19 Resolves and 36 Heroic Tragedies across all 2002 logbooks. Now, let's break down the profits. The raw revenue from drops was 1,866 divines. After subtracting the cost of logbooks, the net profit was 364.5 divines, averaging a 0.18 divine profit per logbook. While item level 80 logbooks were profitable on their own, mixing them with item level 79 logbooks diluted the overall profits. Now let's talk about streaks, because RNG can be brutal. The longest streak without Olroth spawning was 39 logbooks. That's 39 runs in a row without even a chance at a unique drop. The longest streak without any unique drops, Resolve or Heroic Tragedy was 142 logbooks. That's 142 runs with no Resolve or Heroic Tragedy. Even when Olroth did spawn, keep in mind this was strictly item level 79 logbooks. These streaks are a stark reminder of how unpredictable farming can be and why it's important to plan for the worst case scenarios. Now that we've looked at the summary statistics, let's dive into the break-even analysis. Using a Monte Carlo simulation with 100 million virtual runs will answer the question, how many logbooks do you need to break even? This will help us understand the RNG behind farming Olroth and how to prepare for the grind. 
Here's what the simulation found. The mean number of logbooks to break even is 99. This is the average across all 100 million runs. The median is 25 logbooks, meaning 50% of the time you'll break even in 25 logbooks or fewer. The 90th percentile is 211 logbooks, meaning 90% of the time you'll break even in 211 logbooks or fewer. The 95th percentile is 426 logbooks, and the 99th percentile is 1,353 logbooks. These are your worst case scenarios. Now let's talk about the skew in this distribution. The graph is heavily right skewed, which means most of the time you'll actually break even relatively quickly, as shown by the low median of 25 logbooks. However, there's a long tail of extreme cases where it takes hundreds or even thousands of logbooks to break even. The skew is a direct result of RNG. While you might get lucky and hit a resolve or heroic tragedy early, you could also go on a brutal dry streak. So what does this mean for you as a farmer? If you're optimistic, you might focus on the median, 25 logbooks, and hope for the best. However, if you're cautious, you'll want to plan for the 90th or 95th percentile, 211 to 426 logbooks, to ensure you're prepared for bad luck. And if you're ultra cautious, the 99th percentile, 1,353 logbooks, shows just how bad it can get. This is why farming Olrof requires patience and a solid currency buffer. You need to be ready for both the highs and the lows of RNG. Now that we've covered the break-even point, let's talk about profit goals. Using the same Monte Carlo simulation will answer the question, how many logbooks do you need to run to reach 100, 200, or even 500 divines in profit? This will help you plan your farming strategy and set realistic expectations. Let's start with 100 divines. The mean number of logbooks needed is 615. This is the average across all simulations. However, the median is 359 logbooks, meaning 50% of the time you'll reach 100 divine profit in 359 logbooks or fewer. The 90th percentile is 1,428 logbooks, meaning 90% of the time you'll reach 100 divines in 1,428 logbooks or fewer. The 95th percentile is 2,042 logbooks, and the 99th percentile is 3,736 logbooks. This is your absolute worst case scenario. Notice how the distribution is right skewed. This means most of the time you'll hit your goal relatively quickly, but there's a long tail of extreme cases where it takes thousands of logbooks. This is simply the reality of RNG and farming. Next, let's look at 200 divines. The mean number of logbooks needed is 1,164. The median is 847 logbooks, meaning 50% of the time you'll reach 200 divine profit in 847 logbooks or fewer. The 90th percentile is 2,420 logbooks, meaning 90% of the time you'll reach 200 divines in 2,420 logbooks or fewer. The 95th percentile is 3,191 logbooks, and the 99th percentile is a staggering 5,164 logbooks. Here the gap between the mean and median is actually relatively smaller compared to 100 divines. This is because as the profit target increases, the distribution becomes more predictable and less skewed. But there's still a lot of variability. Finally, let's talk about 500 divines. The mean number of logbooks needed is 2,817, the median is 2,438, meaning 50% of the time you'll reach 500 divine profit in 2,438 logbooks or fewer, the 90th percentile is 4,928 logbooks, meaning 90% of the time you'll reach 500 divine profit in 4,928 logbooks or less, the 95th percentile is 5,952 logbooks, and the 99th percentile is 8,350 logbooks. At this level, we can see that the distribution is actually much more symmetric, and the mean and median are closer together. This is a great example of the central limit theorem in action, where the sum of many random events starts to look like a normal distribution. But even here, there's still some variability. As you're starting out, you can actually buy logbooks manually. Use the trade site to buy logbooks one by one at a cheaper price. 
for an example between 0.3 and 0.5 divines, or lower in exalts. Set up an active live search with a maximum buyout, such as half a divine. Always ask sellers if they have more logbooks to sell. They might offer a bulk discount. This happened to me a lot throughout my 2000 logbook runs. Start small. Begin with 50 to 100 logbooks to test the strategy. This keeps your initial investment low, between 15 to 50 divines, and reduces risk. Have a backup strategy. If you start with a dry streak, have another farming strategy ready to fall back on. For an example, breach farming. This ensures you don't run out of currency and can continue farming or off later. Expect variability. Farming Olrof follows a geometric distribution, meaning most of your drops will come early, but there's a long tail of dry streaks. The more logbooks you run, the more your results will even out, and you will be profitable in the long run. Defensive measures for Olrof. Maximize cold resistance. Olrof deals heavy cold damage, so prioritize plus maximum cold resistance on your gear and tree. Aim for 90% cold resistance to minimize damage and avoid bricking your runs. This is especially important if your build isn't fully optimized yet. Improve your build. Over time, invest in upgrades to make your build more tanky and efficient. Focus on Olroth. When running logbooks, only check for Olroth and immediately teleport out if he's not there. Do not clear the logbook unless it's buffed in the future. This maximizes your time and efficiency, allowing you to run more logbooks per hour. Speed is key. Logbooks are fast to run. So prioritize speed and efficiency over clearing everything. Long-term mindset. Persevere. Farming Olroth is a long-term strategy. While RNG can be brutal at times, the law of large numbers ensures you'll be profitable if you stick with it. Scale up. As you earn profits, reinvest in more logbooks and upgrades to your build. A larger initial investment, for an example 200 plus logbooks, can ease the starting pains. But starting small and scaling up is a safer approach for most players.